Hey, Andrew from Azito. Today I'm going to help you build a DIY pot plant stand. Some of the tools you'll need is a miter saw, a biscuit joiner, a detail sander, some clamps and measuring, timber, and don't forget to have some safety gear on hand. Our pot plant stand is going to have four legs. We need to decide how tall or how far off the ground we want our pot to be. That looks pretty good to me, so I'll just put a mark there. Line up all four pieces of timber, put a line right across here, all four have a mark. We need to decide on the width of our pot. So the key here will be to measure across the pot here and then add on two times the thickness of our timber. And once we do that, we can mark off the off-cut end, two pieces at that measurement. We've now got our base marked out. We just need to move that timber onto our miter saw and we're going to do some trench cutting. Now let's go ahead and get the sliding miter saw all set up. So we just want to move this to 90 degree cross cut mode. We bring it around to zero on the gauge here, lop it off, grab our first piece of timber for the base, turn our laser on and line up our laser with our pencil mark, lock the material clamp down. Now we're ready to get cutting. That's the first piece of timber for our base. We just need to repeat that one more time. So we now have our two pieces of the base and we want it to be in a crisscross pattern like that. So we'll need to mark off the centre of this piece of timber or both pieces of timber, which be like this so the two can lock together nicely. So we'll need to measure halfway down this width. So now we need to drop the miter saw down until we match the line on our timber. You'll need to extend your fence out a bit to make the trench cut work properly. Lock that off, grab your piece back and we've got marks here and we'll line that up with the laser just like that and then we're ready to get trench cutting. And there's our first trench cut in the base. We just need to repeat that one more time and then we'll be able to put it together and create a cross. This forms the base for our pot. We now need to decide what angle we want. And we've already got a pot here that's already got an angle, so let's see if we can follow that. Let's put a piece of timber just here, line it up and put a nice line just there. We've now decided on what angle we'd like to cut through there. This will form the basis of the top and the bottom of both the supporting legs and the cradling legs of our pot plant holder. Grab the piece of timber with our angle on it, lop it off so it can be a little bit hands-free. And with our laser, we just want to move this base until we get it perfectly aligned which if I look on the gauge here, that's about 12 degrees. I'll lock that off and all the cuts from here will be all at that same angle. Ready to get cutting. Move my piece of timber along until I align with the laser again. As you can see, that forms our short support leg and the angle's the same at the top as it is at the bottom. We just need to repeat this step another three times. Now let's get on to creating the longer leg, which is exactly the same as that shorter leg, except the measurements are further apart. All our cutting with the miter saw is done now because we have four short legs, four long legs, our cross piece forming the base for our pot plant. We'll need to join all this together Let's create our own little measuring tool. Best thing to do is measure in to halfway, get your pencil, put a line there, then across the other side. Now we've got a nice little cross right in the centre of this piece of timber. That's going to become our measuring tool moving forward. Now with our new little measuring tool, we're able to mark the centres of our timber. One on this side. And we just need to repeat that step for all of these pieces of timber, including the short pieces. Once you've completed marking all the centres of all the four short legs and the four long legs, we'll need to get the bench set up to be using the biscuit joiner so we can pull it all together. Let's now just grab one of our short legs that we've put a mark on there for our centres and clamp it off to the bench. And what you'll notice with this biscuit joiner is there's a nice sharp red line there and a red line there. What we're going to do is line that red line up with the centres we've already marked on the ends of our timber. And we're going to place it up against here and we're going to plunge it in. I'm going to say plunge it in. If you see this operation here, that's just sliding in and out. If you look closely here, you'll see that there's a blade protruding. That's going to cut a slot into the end of our timber, which is where we'll locate our biscuits and help join it together. Let's cut a couple of slots. It's pretty easy. We've got one slot cut there. We just need to flip it and do the same on the other side. There we go, we've got two nicely cut slots there, which is where our biscuits will locate. We need to repeat that in all four small legs 
as well as all four of the long legs. It's time to put some slots into our cross piece supporting our pot plant. We'll need to put some slots in here and in this side and repeat that on each one of those ends. So let's get to marking. We'll align our biscuit jointer differently this time by clamping it off on this end of the bench. And again, aligning our red mark with our center marks in the timber. And now we've got these two slots cut here. We just need to repeat that step on this side and then on the other end as well. And then bring in this piece and repeat the same steps on both ends. Now that we've got all the slots cut in our cross pieces, it's time to try and form a bit of a H. I've just got two of the long legs, two of the short legs. Create a bit of a H on the table. And this roughly maps out what we're going to try and glue together. In order to glue these together, we're going to need some biscuits, which are these little guys here, and they just fit inside the slot. The beauty of biscuit joins or biscuits inside the slots there is you have the ability to play it backwards and forwards until you're happy and get it right. So you'll need to glue a bit of that off and then set it right and let it rest for the glue to set. From this point, you'll need to create another one on the other side. So let's get together. It's best to make sure you use a really strong glue and you put a bit of glue on the face, just like this and make sure you get some glue right down into that trench as well. Pop your biscuits in, there will be a bit of overflow at the ends. Wipe it up with your cloth. Put your next biscuit in, wipe it up with your cloth. Do the same on the other side with your glue. A bit on the face, make sure you get some in the trench. Then you slot these together, just like that. Let that one sit. And you'll just repeat that same join for everywhere we've got a slot. Underneath here will be where the long leg is, another short leg there, another long leg there. Let it all set for at least half an hour from the last time you glue it together before you move on. Now that we've got all the pieces glued together, it's just a case of connecting them. Get yourself some timber putty that's the same colour, especially if you're wishing to put some stain or some oils on it. And just putty off all of the imperfections, all the cracks and grooves that might be there. Then get yourself a detail sander and just sand off all those imperfections. Now we're on the home stretch of completing our DIY pot plant stand. We've cleaned up all the edges, now it's time to put some sort of finish on it. You can decide whether it's a full colour paint, or maybe it's a stain or just a clear oil. Either way, the spray gun will make really easy work of that. Then put your pot in, decide on your plant, and now we've completed our DIY pot plant stand.